Hi, I'm FIDE Master Jason Morfield, and today I'm going to be reviewing Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual. Dvoretsky's End Endgame Manual is probably one of the most talked about chess books of all time. It is frequently referenced by top grandmasters when talking about the Endgame, and it is written by one of the most highly regarded chess coaches in the world, international master Mark Dvoretsky, who in my opinion is one of the strongest chess players to never become a grandmaster. However, same book is also frequently misunderstood. My intention with this video is to explain my opinion on the book, as well as you might get the most use out of it. And I'm going to start with some of the pros about it. This book is massive. That allows it to be almost entirely comprehensive, meaning that if you want to study a specific type of endgame or learn about a typical idea for that endgame, chances are it's in here. It covers essentially every type of important endgame, except for the very unbalanced ones like King and Queen versus King, I guess. Uh, where the results are already clear, and there's not much analysis necessary. The most important endgames in each section are outlined in blue, making it relatively easy to determine which endgames are worth remembering. I, I, I know you can't see it very well, but there's an example right here. And uh, this is actually one of the things that they came up with in, newer, in the newer editions, I believe. And it really helps cut down on study time if you feel like you only want to study part of the book by showing you what's more important right off the bat. So it can be a bit more time effective to study it that way as well. Additionally, the quality of the analysis is excellent, which is honestly one, of, probably at least one of its best qualities, if not the best quality of this book. With four editions down and a fifth on the way, I believe it's going to be released sometime in August. This book has been scrutinized by many top players and analysts, and while some mistakes have been found along the way, they were certainly not glaring ones. And with those analysis in the introduction of table bases, the recent editions are, if not mistake-free, extremely close. Essentially, if you can find a mistake in the analysis of the most recent edition, I and many others would be extremely impressed. And now for some of the cons. This book is not for everyone. This is probably the most serious con, and one of the reasons I chose this book to talk about. And that is, essentially, if you're not already a very strong player with a good amount of endgame knowledge, you're not going to get a ton out of this book. The main reason for this is that it does not explain the basic concepts of each endgame in a lot of depth, but rather focuses on more complicated practical examples. While it does show the basic concepts of each endgame in a way to be considered complete as a reference guide, someone learning each said endgame for the first time would probably find this information insufficient, and be hopelessly confused by the following content. To illustrate this, I'm rated over 2300 USCF, and I find many of the exercise and concepts in this book difficult to remember or initially understand, and have to put in work myself to make sure I get something out of reading about it. And I'm going to show you an example of a position analyzed later in the book. So this, I believe, is a Kantorovich Stechner position. Dvoretsky spends over seven pages analyzing each move of this uh, complicated endgame in detail, outlining mistakes made in various analysis over time, and due to the nature of rook endgames, many of the lines go well over a dozen moves deep. Well, of course you can get a lot of this analysis if you study it uh, thoroughly, as is the case with pretty much everything here. A complete guide to this uncommon endgame is probably not what anyone under 2600, or at least most of the people under 2600, are looking for. Additionally, as I've touched on earlier, this book is hard. It's not a book you can casually read through, like you're in an airplane, you just need some light reading, you open this book and just read through it. Or at least you can do that, but you might not get much out of it. If you want to understand the concepts, you have to actively work through it uh, preferably solving some of the exercises in the book along the way, which I should add are very difficult, at least most of them are, if you want to get much out of it. Finally, something that's a little bit of a both a pro and a con. If you recognize that this book is difficult, and you start working on it with good end background endgame knowledge and spend a lot of time on it, you will finish studying it eventually a much better endgame player. Honestly, if somebody was able to somehow remember over 80% of the content of this book, which is obviously a really huge number for, but I'm just using this as the example, they'd probably be able to play the endgame at an extraordinarily high level, stronger than many GMs if they could apply it. 
when necessary. So, what sort of rating am I going to give this book? Overall, I'd probably give it 5 out of 5 stars. And it's a good addition to any chess library. But if you're rated, for example, below 1500 or maybe even 1800, this might not be the best way to spend your time. A lot of this stuff is going to be super complicated and go over your head. Trust me, it happens to me too. And for your rating range, I'd recommend a different endgame book as a starting block. A personal favorite of mine is De La Villa's 100 Endgames You Must Know. But if you've already got a strong endgame base and are ready to spend a lot of time and effort studying the endgame, I honestly don't think that there's any better option than Dvoretsky's Endgame Manual. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Please feel welcome to discuss your own opinions about this book or endgame study in general in the comments section, and make sure to let Chess Meal know if you want more videos of this type in the future. Bye.